Hey there. In this video, I'm going to do things a little bit different. I kind of want to just talk about architecture in Unity projects and um, some of the problems I've had and kind of explain some stuff that I wrote about last week. So last week I wrote an article just talking about keeping the components of your objects and your prefabs at the root level or maybe at the lowest at the second level and not having them all the way down kind of in your object hierarchy or your character hierarchy. And I had a lot of feedback from that. Most people agreed, but there were a lot of people with just questions and you know, di slightly different thoughts on things. Some people really liked the idea of putting components down deep. And um, I just kind of wanted to explain my reasoning behind not doing it and go over some of the, the issues that I've had and then show how I would actually set them up. So like, if you take this character, for example, it's just a cowboy I grabbed off the asset store. Um, w one of the things people had asked about was, well, what about like a weapon? If I put a weapon on a character, I just want to attach it to the hand and add a script to it and you know have that work. And that'd be like, you know, I expand this guy out, find his hand right there, and then just drag over, you know, like this katana, drop it right there on his hand, and maybe I reorient it. And just like that. And then I could add a, an animator on this guy so we can see how it would look, right? He would, he'll move around and the weapon will match up. I'm like, yeah, that, that works. You know, I've got a weapon there. It's lined up. The animations are going to be okay. And I could even go in and add a weapon script to it. Probably wouldn't have another animation down here. But I could have like a weapon script that, you know, imagine this has a bunch of components on it or a bunch of settings, you know, damage and refresh or whatever it's got. And like I said, this will work. You can do this, but it quickly becomes unmanageable. It kind of breaks and you know, close some other stuff out so I can keep getting dings. But yeah, I keep, you know, it, it it turns into a mess later on. Like it starts off easy and quick and just like anything that you start off super easy and quick, it becomes hard to maintain. Um, uh, so I've run into a lot of cases like this, just building a bunch of different Unity projects. Some of the time I've done it, other times been you know, other people who made the same mistakes and I went in and showed them why not to do it and it's usually met with pretty good response but the biggest problem is like if I've got this weapon down here you know, and I've got a character I, I don't know where to set my weapon settings you know like I don't know imagine this guy's got a bunch of components on him I'm not gonna know that I need to expand all the way down find the katana and then change the settings there and in the cases that I've seen like this usually when this happens there's also something on the head and something you know on just about every other component so it, it becomes a big giant kind of a mess in fact I've seen some where it was you know components one level on the top level on the second level and then more on the third level and then you know seven levels down there's another component you have to add and as soon as you have to start you know, creating a new one or modifying things, it all just becomes a nightmare. I'm going to turn that off. Should fix the problem. Um, so anyway, I just kind of want to show how I like to set them up and give, give a good idea of what, what I would recommend if you're going to build something like this. So obviously I wouldn't just drop a katana right down here anymore. But um, the first thing I would do is kind of take this character and not have him be the root. Uh, you may have heard this before, but a lot of developers, myself included, really want to keep the art separated from the logic of the, the object. So instead of having the model right here as the root, what I usually do is just create an empty game object and call this like my character. And then I'm going to just reset the position, just do a little trick, drop it as a child, hit reset, pull it back out, and then make this a child, just so I can keep that position there. Oh, it was zeroed anyway. So it, it, what happens here is now 
I can put my scripts up here and it's totally separated out from the, the actual character model itself. This lets me swap out the character, update the character, and just make any little changes that I need without having to worry about breaking the actual prefab itself. So I can change this model, you know, if our artist gives me a new version of it and it's slightly different, I don't have to drop that in and worry about re-adding and resetting all of the components. Or if I want to make this work with, you know, a female cowboy, cowgirl, I guess, I don't have to just redo all of the character stuff. I can literally just swap the model out there and maybe reassign one or two references and not have to worry about all of the settings. Like I said, right now we have a really basic character, so there's not a lot here. In fact, there's nothing. Um, I want to add some character weapon controller. So, yeah, it, it just turns into a mess later on down the road. So what I've done here now is just add this really basic demo character weapon controller. And you see here, it's got like one transform for a weapon point. So in this kind of example, I want to show how you how I would set up a weapon kind of loosely. Like I said, I, it's not as clean as I would normally make it, but it's got to be quick enough for a video that's not an hour long. So I'd set this guy up like this, add a character weapon controller or something similar and then I'll go down and find the actual hand like the point where I would want to attach a hand so say I wanted to put the weapons in his left hand and then here I just add another empty game object and I just usually call this something like weapon point um, and then under there I like to add another object I just add a cube and then I'll scale this down to like 0 0.05 0 0.05 and 0.2 what this is doing is just giving me like a really simple visualization of where this point is and what direction it's facing. I can rename it visualization just so I can tell where this is pointing. And I don't add the cube onto this thing because then if I want to rescale it like I did there, it's going to mess with the scale of anything that I attach to it later. So I've got this weapon point object here. And what I do is move it kind of in place and I can see the blue arrows to forward, so I'll just rotate it so that it's just about right. So I think Y is actually going to be 90 there. And drop it down so it's kind of in place. Uh, I'm not going to get perfect with this one. Just get it so that it looks like it's kind of matching up with the hand. And then let's save this real quick. And then I'd take my weapons, and like I said, I could just drop the weapons in there, but. You know, I really like to have that extra layer on everything, not just characters, but weapons or any other prefab. So what I do is just go in here and create an empty one. Name it like Weapon Katana. And then dig down into this RPG Swords pack. This was, again, just another pack that was free on the asset store. Drop that in there as a child. Oh, and I also want to add another cube here that's the visualization just so I can see where the root of the thing is really easily and uh, what direction it's facing. You could also do this with some gizmos, but I didn't want to add code to this and make it more complicated. So here I've got the katana. You can see like right here is where the weapon is. What we're going to do is make this cube line up with the other cube. So what I want to do is just move this katana up a little bit right there so that when the character grabs it, he's grabbing it right at that point. I think that's that's close enough. That's good. So now I've got a katana weapon and I'll just add a little weapon script to it. This script doesn't really do anything. Uh, it does one thing, I guess. It handles equipping. So what we're going to do is in our weapon character equipper script, whatever I called it, we're just going to call this equip method and pass in the weapon point which will set this thing to active. It'll set its parent to that weapon point. And then we're gonna zero out the local position and set the rotation to default and set the scale back down to one, just in case there's any weird scaling. It's just nice extra little one to have in there. And then I added an unequip method too, so we could cycle through these and make it a tiny bit more interesting. And that just turns it, uh, you know, sets the parent to null, so it just goes back into the root and then sets the thing to not active. And get, in a real project, I wouldn't want to keep all of these things alive in the scene. You know, I'd cache them somewhere, have them under some weapons object maybe, or 
instantiate them when I need them, depending on how often I was actually going to swap between them. So if I've got this weapon katana and I've got a character, you can see everything's at the root level. I don't have to really find stuff. But I do need to set up this weapon controller. So if I expand this back out, you see all, all I really do is drag in the weapon point right there, and I'm done. Now I don't have to expand this character anymore. I don't have to look underneath there for anything. And then here, like I said, this is kind of dirty, but I've just got an array here where I can assign some weapons and then cycle through them in the code. Let me, I'll show you the code real quick before I hit play. I'm just checking for fire one, just a left click or something, and then just calling swap weapon. You just go through the weapon index and then unequip anything that's equipped and equip whatever the next weapon is. Like I said, super dirty, but it, it gets the point across, I think. So now if I click play, and just click on that. Oh, can't really see it there. The weapon got equipped. And here you can see like this weapon is actually upside down, right? Like it's kind of not how you would hold a weapon or at least not how you would hold a katana. So that just means that I need to go into my character and take this weapon point and I just want to flip it over. So switch to this one and uh, it's just gonna be 180 on the Z. So there we go. Now when I equip a weapon, it's going to equip in the right orientation. Yep, looks good. Um, like I said, still not quite perfect. Now maybe I'll move, um, take this thing and just move it down a little bit. Get it so that it lines up a little bit more. And then I'll copy this transform and then repaste it. There we go. So now we've got an easy way to just swap out weapons and to show that I'll just make another weapon like duplicate my weapon or let's make this into a prefab so if we went like prefabs and made this weapon katana then I could duplicate this and make a weapon um, I think there was an epic sword so let's call it weapon epic and then instead of the katana and here I can just because how this is set up and just drag this thing right over here and expand out to the sword and take the sword epic drop it in there as a child and I can delete the katana then move this thing so that it lines up with the visualization I'm gonna make the visualizer a little bit bigger so you can see it through there and then just drag this down like that yep. and then the arrow still pointing the right way so we're good there and I'll make this into its own prefab and then it'll just assign weapon epic as well. So now if I hit play, I can just cycle through these two weapons just like this. Uh, and then they, they swap out easily. They still track with the animation. Um, and like I said in the post, this is really just a lot of personal preference based off of experience that I've had you know, digging through things or bringing on designers or artists who are struggling to find the right setting for you know, this character, like how to adjust how much damage he does or how long his punches take or whatever it is, all kinds of different things. And it just becomes a giant pain in the ass. And this keeping it all at the root level, ideally, just helps a lot. Um, anyway, it was a little bit rambly, but that's just kind of what I wanted to talk about today and just kind of explain it a little bit more. So ho hopefully that helps somebody. and. I guess if you have questions about this, feel free to you know, leave a comment or just shoot me an email on the site, unity3d.college. I'd be happy to talk about it more or be convinced by somebody who has a really good argument against this. Uh, but if, if you only take one thing away, just take away the idea of the very least separate out your art from your code. Keep your objects and your art separate with at least this one layer right here. Cool. Um, I think that's everything I have to say about this for now. So hopefully it helps somebody. And thanks for watching. Oh, yeah. And of course, like and subscribe.